Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Now, baby, you be sweet, and you stay there with mom, okay? Go with mom. Go with mom. Go. Go with mama. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let us stand up and open up in prayer. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for your holy word. God, we ask you that you would touch and minister to every heart today. God, you know those who are coming. You know those who have you are ordained to be here today. Now, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, let your anointing be released to minister to every need that is represented in here today in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you and I praise you and I glorify you because I know that all things do work together for good for them that love you, Father, and for those who are called according to your purpose. And Father, we bless you and we glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you just, just, just to know today, today can be the day for your miracle. Because, see, we serve a God that operates and live a lifestyle of faith. And God has called us to that same lifestyle, a lifestyle of faith. Amen. And so as we enter to this service this morning, I want you to be prepared to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Pastor Olga, I would like you to go up and greet the people right now before we get started. Amen. Grab your mic right there. Amen. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Well, we want to welcome those who is uh, who is here, those who is watching this broadcast. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you. And we know that the scripture was saying that the, my house, it says that regarding the church, regarding the house of the Lord, where it says that the, my house should be a house of of prayer. This is when we come into the house of God, we lay before Him our concerns, our troubles, our, you know, whatever we're going through. So some some of you maybe who is watching this broadcast may be going through some challenges in your life, but don't look at that challenges, don't look at the circumstances that you might face in your life, because if you keep look in the circumstances that circumstances will defeat you but if when you look at the up in the bigness of god who you serve that will override god is able to do great things god is the god of the supernatural and when we keep our eyes on the lord god can supernaturally move over that circumstances and situations in our life. So let's be lifting right now before the Lord, our families, and first of all, this family, the family of the new life in Christ Jesus Church, that the Lord continue to build. And we're going to lift up the our children, our grandchildren, our relatives. How many of us know that the people need the prayer amen and god called us as the men and women of god to be these people to be this people of prayer if we not pray as the christian as the followers of christ who will stay in the gap world will not leave them in prayer right so we as the vessels and channels and god's hand who will stay in the gap and build a hedge in behalf of the our family members, our loved ones, our neighbors, and those who we keep in touch with. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Heavenly Father, we lift them to you, Lord God, every of our family members, and the family father of the new life in Christ Jesus Church, the church that you build. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that no weapon against our family members should prosper. Father, we claim these souls for the kingdom of the living God. Lord, we ask in you, Lord God, there's no distance in the spirit. Wherever they are, what state they are, what country they are, Lord, you know, Lord. And we ask in you, Lord God, that you are moved by your spirit on behalf of our loved ones, our neighbors, 
and the people who we concern. And Father, we claim these souls for the kingdom of God. We break every assignment and authority in the name of Jesus. We break every assignment of the Satan that come against their lives, that come against their souls. And we release your will, Father. We release your plan, Father, over their lives. We thank you for it in advance. Lord, we cover them with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God. We give you praise for them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So just keep look that your loved ones, they saved, they delivered. They might be not look or act like, but just have faith in God. You know. Some of you know that uh, some testimonies in, even in your own life. Some of you raised in a church, and, but do you one day just, even though you was raised in a church, but you really didn't know Christ. Christ is not a religious or some kind of ritual. Christ is the relationship to trust him, to follow him, to is not to live by the rules of religion, but to have the strong fellowship, strong um, desire to just follow him, to understand, yes, I was a sinner. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I was not always was saved. I was not even grew up in a church. I was a worldly person who was served the Satan because when you're in a world, you're not serving God, you're serving the devil. So, but when I was realized that I was a sinner and come to Christ and said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I don't want to live like this and I know that you have a better for me. Well, the same thing, some of you, maybe those who is watching this broadcast, you don't know Christ. Maybe you once in your lifetime you met Christ or have a some knowledge about him and maybe even the read the word but you don't understand the revelation today is your day today you can really be introduced to the Lord Jesus his love and his compassion is cannot compare no man or woman no man on this earth can replace the love of Christ no woman on this earth can replace the love of Christ when we truly know the who Christ is, He can fulfill all of our needs. And you know what? The scripture says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. I know for me, before I was got married, well, like I was share with you, I was living a world and I didn't know God and I make sense so many tremendous mistakes in my life okay. because I was following the wheel that I want. I want to be with people who I choose to be, not even uh, consult God about the relationships. But you know, when you don't consult God about the relationships in your life, it's going to be follow the consequences because Satan, he come to kill, steal, and destroy. His job is to remove you from your destiny, from the path of righteousness, from the path and purpose that God has for us. So I made a decision, I made a quality decision when I came to Christ. I said, Lord, I want to follow you. And I've been following him for many years. And the same thing God wants for you. Just keep following the Lord. He will supply all of your needs. He will restore every relationship and every family member can be saved because you will stay in a gap for your people, for your families. Just do what God called you to do. God is faithful. God is faithful. So I would just want to encourage you today. And we have our man of God, Pastor Larry in the house, who love his people. And today, I believe this word, that God have for all of us will minister into our heart and know that that his word will not return void just accept and receive through God's word what he has for us amen hallelujah amen well good morning to everyone
God bless you all, and uh, I'm still pressing in, still holding on, still looking forward, still holding on to the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you still holding on today? <laughs> Sometimes it seems like, Lord, what is there to hold on to? Amen. <laughs> but, you know, God has called us to a, a lifestyle of faith, and he's called us to live by faith. He called us to 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 do it to uh, walk by faith, not by sight. You see, there's a lot of times I've been wanting to just throw in a towel and just walk away, but you know, the call of God on my life won't let me do that, and so, and I just can't do what I want to do when you know, just because things don't seem like they lining up with what we expect. But I know that God's hand is still on us, and He's still doing what He said He's going to do. Amen. So I want you to prepare your hearts today. Because, see, God has instructed me, I believe with all my heart, to impart faith to you. Faith. Amen. Because, see, we all got to come to the point of, to believe the gospel in order to see the gospel manifest in our lives, in our hearts. We have to believe the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come, come and plug that fan up for me, please. We have to come to the point to believe the gospel. And God has called us to that place. Amen. And so as we go into that area of ministry uh, to believe God, and it's going, it's, going to take, it's going to take us applying ourselves. Amen. It's going to take us applying ourselves. And so today I want to ask you, to open up your heart because God is going to speak to your heart and he's going to speak by his spirit through what I am saying to you today. He's going to speak to you individually by his spirit. Amen. Amen. Though you will hear me speaking to you, yet the spirit of God will speak through the words that I'm giving you. In other words, you will, you will hear what I'm saying, but you will hear what the spirit of God is saying through what I'm saying. And so it's so important that you understand that. Because, see, that's how you hear from God. You hear the person that's speaking, but God is speaking directly to you as an individual through what is being said. That's how we be ministered to. Amen. God wants to minister to each of our hearts. Amen. Glory to God. And so, with all that said, I'm going to do something this morning. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. Of the Lord, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Father, we do honor you. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We give you glory, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for speaking to our hearts today. We thank you, Lord God, that you're opening our eyes of understanding, that we will know what is the hope of your calling for our lives, that we will understand the will and the purpose that you have planned for our lives. Father, we are not looking to the arm of the flesh, Father, but Father, we are looking to you to lead us in the guidance of all truth and the truest things to come. Father, we worship you. 
We worship you, Father. And God, we give you glory. We give you praise, Lord God. Now, Father, I speak blessings over your people today. I thank you, Father, that they have ears to hear and a heart to receive. I thank you, Father, for making my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. Father, we covenant with you right now that what you do in the lives of your people from this day forth, we're going to look to you with, 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 with a grateful heart and we're going to give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' mighty and majestic name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Let's prepare our hearts to receive the word of God today. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've been talking about on the, living a lifestyle of faith on Sunday morning. Amen. And uh, right now we are in lesson number five. Lesson number five. The lifestyle of faith. Living the life. We're called to live a lifestyle of faith. Amen. And to live a lifestyle of faith, that means that we have to see what God is saying in his word. We've got to learn how to we got to learn how to hear what the Spirit of God is saying while we're reading the Word of God. Because, see, there are certain errors in God's Word that it points us to, to, to show us an examples. And if we don't understand what He's showing us in the Word while we're reading the Word, we will miss out on what He actually is trying to show us. We have been in church many years, and many of us are still trying to learn what it means to live a lifestyle of faith. We're trying to live, trying to understand what faith is really is. Amen. So God is calling us to a place that we will see, know, and understand what it really means to live a lifestyle of faith. In Mark chapter 5 and verse number 25, I want to show you something here. <clears throat> because, see, we, look, we read this so often and we see and we try to, <clears throat> we try to say that, that Jesus worked this, work, worked this miracle on this woman. But no, Jesus did not work this miracle on this woman. This woman worked this miracle on herself. And I'm going to prove that to you in the word of God. Mark chapter 5. Amen. In Mark chapter 5, and I want you to look here, verse number, just start reading verse number 25. Or actually, we can start reading the verse number 22. Verse number 22. Amen. And uh, because I want to show you uh, uh, something here that's going to help us, that's going to help your faith. See, I got to, I, I'm on a mandate right now to strengthen your faith. I'm on a mandate to strengthen your faith, amen, because, see, we're coming deeper and deeper until the last days, and God is looking for faith in the church today, amen. God is looking for faith in the church today, and my job is to prepare you to live a lifestyle of faith, to trust God regardless of what you're going through, that you will look to God knowing that he hears you when you pray, knowing that he's there to meet your every need when, he's, when, when he calls upon you. This is God's word for you today. So I want you to take heed to what God is saying to you because he's going to bring out some very important points in his word. Verse number 22 says, And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My daughter lied at, home, at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now, that's a very important statement right there. Now, notice Jesus, because, see, Jesus, there's no, it, Jesus could have said, no, I don't th think I need to come to your house. I can just speak the word. Your servant should be healed. Your daughter should be healed. But no, that was not the case here. But we see here that Jesus agreed to go with this man, Jairus. We see that he's walking with Jairus. Now, notice in verse number 24, and Jesus went, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and throbbed him. And now notice what now notice this right here. Now, because there was a there was a woman, she was exercising her faith because she didn't have no more money to go to no doctor. She didn't have no money to go to no physician, but she was exercising her faith. She was building up her heart. She was she was causing her heart to be aligned with God's word. She's lying in her bed and she was just meditating and, and, and confessing, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just get to this man of God, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know in my heart that I shall be made whole. I know that I shall be made whole. You see, this woman, she was doing what? She was strengthening her faith by confessing what she expected to receive from God. Amen? She was strengthening her own faith exercising what in her own heart what she expected to receive from God. Now, when she came 
Now, notice what it said in verse number 25 now. Because, see, people look at this and they think Jesus is the one that, that orchestrated her faith. They think that Jesus is the one that caused her faith to be, to be released, that she can be healed. No, Jesus didn't have nothing to do with this woman being healed. This woman had worked this healing out her own self. You remember how the Bible always tells us, according to your faith being unto you? Well, this is what we see operating in this woman's life. This is not something where Jesus reached out and touched her and said, I will be healed. No. When Jesus reached out to her, he will congratulate her for her healing. Amen. He will congratulate her for her healing. In other words, he was complimenting her. Amen. But notice what it says in verse number 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood, 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. You see, she was dying. She, she was decaying. She had no hope unless she believed that this was truly a man of God. She had no hope whatsoever of getting healed. Because she had been to all the doctors. She had been to all the physicians. She had spent all the money that she had. She had nothing else. So when she heard about this man Jesus, she began to rehearse in her heart. I mean, she was building up her faith. If I can just touch, if I can just get to this man of God, if I can just touch this man of God, oh, I know I can, I can be made whole. You know, and when she, she activated, see, that the Bible tells us faith without what? Works is dead. Now we see this in action right here. Look at verse number 26. And a certain, and, 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 and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard, listen, when she had heard of Jesus, <clears throat> came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, what did Jesus have to do with her confession? He had nothing to do with her confession. All Jesus did was walk. He was walking to Jairus' house with Jairus to heal his daughter. To heal his daughter. He had nothing to do with this woman with the issue of blood. He was just passing by her house. He was just passing by her house. And she heard that it was him that was about to pass by. And she began to, she began to call upon God. God, oh God, I don't know if I can just touch this man that you have anointed, that you have sent by my way. I don't know if I can just touch his clothes. I shall be made whole. What was the woman doing? She was building up her own faith in what she believed that she could receive if she could just touch this man's garment. Now notice she didn't touch the man. She didn't touch the man. She only touched the garment that he wore. Amen? Can you see that? Because she said, if I could just touch his clothes. Amen? If I could just touch his coat, his garment. His garment. For she, verse number 28, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen? Now notice what happened in verse number 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was what? Dried up. And she felt in her body that she was what? Healed. She, now did Jesus ask her to come touch her body? Come touch his clothes? No, Jesus didn't ask her to come touch his clothes. Amen. Who, had, who, who, who told her about to go touch the clothes of Jesus? She purposed in her own heart. She purposed in her own heart. In other words, she prepared her heart to receive a miracle from God. See, we are, a lot of us, we want a miracle. We want a touch from heaven. But we do not prepare ourselves to receive what God has for us. I like this. I've, I've read this time and time again. But then when I was reading it this time, I saw something in this reading that I've never saw before. And I saw that this woman, she came up and touched the hem of Jesus' garment without Jesus' permission. You understand what I just said? 
She came and touched Jesus without Jesus' permission. In other words, she didn't ask Jesus could she be healed. She didn't come and say, Lord, I need healing. Will you please minister to me? No, she didn't do that. What she did, she came and she took what she wanted from God. See, the devil wants you to think that nothing is going to happen for you and everything, your lifestyle is just the same and it's going to always be the same. He wants you to think that nothing that you decide to do for the kingdom of God will ever matter. But God has already made different plans for your life. God has called you to a lifestyle of faith. This woman, she has spent, she, she working it out from a natural standpoint. She did everything she could do from a natural standpoint. She went to the doctor. She went to the physician. She went to the medical uh, science. She went to everywhere that she could find where she could possibly get help from a natural standpoint. And all they did was drain her of all of her money. And the Bible says she got nothing better but rather grew what? Worse but rather grew worse. Hallelujah. How many of us have gone from doctor to doctor to doctor, and then when we get back home, we, we either the same way we were when we went to the doctor, or worse? You understand what I'm saying? Because we're more dependent upon what science can do, or what man can do, rather than what God can do or has already done. See, God has already wrought for you the greatest healing that you could ever experience. But you got to come to the point. See, God can restore your limbs. You might, you, don't be picking on, I'm not picking on you. Amen. God can cause your limbs to grow out. Normal, just like the other. Amen. You see, God created those limbs. If your car would have a, 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 an accident, you would go to the parts store to get new parts for your car. You think God will create you and not have spare parts to, 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 to fix you, to, 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 to make you to what he created you to be? Everything that you need, God has already provided for you. Amen. But the only way you're going to get it is to learn how to exercise your faith. This woman, she knew that she could be different than what she was. She was lying in that bed, just dying. The doctors couldn't do nothing for her. She was dying with an issue of blood for 12 years. She said, what has I got to lose? I might as well just go to this man. I might as well just go to this man. And she purposed in her heart. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I mean, she, she made a decision. She made a, a, a conscious decision in her heart what she was going to receive from God. And she didn't let fear stop her. When she opened up the door and saw the crowd around Jesus, she could have looked at that as a, a roadblock to her healing. When she saw the people, how, how they were throbbing Jesus and pushing against Jesus, she could have saw that as a hindrance to her receiving her miracle. But when she spotted Jesus, she looking, where is he at? And when she spotted him, she said, that go my miracle. And she put her gauge on him and would not take her eyes off of him. She went to him. She went to him. She pressed her way through the crowd. She went to him. And she took what she wanted. She said, devil, you have kept me bound long enough. And enough is enough. I will be healed today. And she went through that crowd. And she touched that garment. And she fell down on the ground. The power hit her so hard. She fell down on the ground. And Jesus stopped in his track. Because she, he felt virtue leave his body. He stopped in his track. He said. <laughs> <laughs> he felt that power leaving his body. And he just. <laughs> then he looked at his disciples. Somebody touched me. And Jesus and the disciples looked at Jesus and said, Master, you see all the people dropping you, and you think you think that we don't see somebody touching you? Jesus knew because the virtue had gone out of him, he knew that it was not just an ordinary touch. See, everyone was touching him did not have faith. Not everyone was touching him had faith. But when faith touched him, 
when faith touched him, it over it took control. Oh, it took control of the natural. It took control of time. It took control of the elements. And it took control of the physical body. And it changed everything that she was experiencing in her body. Mm. When she was sent home for a time to die, now there's a time to live. <laughs> for everything under the heaven, there's a season and there's a time. She found her time. And it was in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And she rushed out and she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, I would have did that if it had been me. I don't know if he did it or not. <laughs> but I would have did that because it would have been, been unexpected. And I'm quite sure he would. He, that was unexpected to him when she touched the hem of his garment. And the power just went out and it was it came out so powerfully that it she fell back on the ground. It hit her heart. And she fell back on the ground. And Jesus looked around and said, Who touched me? And she done conveyed herself away in the crowd. But then Jesus kept looking. Then the woman, he, she couldn't get away. She come and own up to what has been done. She said, Master, it was I. Now notice he, she told him everything that she went through. She began to explain to him all the things that she had gone through. Now, he said, daughter, thy what? Faith. Now he didn't say, my faith. He didn't say, thank God that God used me to heal you today. No, that's not what he said. He said, daughter, thy faith. That means her faith. She exercised her faith. She needed something from God. Jesus already had everything he needed. He didn't need nothing. She the one had a need in her life. And she prepared her heart to receive what she wanted from God. And when she did, she received the Spirit of God moving in her body like a volk of lightning. And it knocked out all of that sickness and disease that was in her body. And Jesus turned around and said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. You see, you have a power that's on the inside of you is waiting for you to understand to understand it. You have a power on the inside of you, which is, let me tell you something. That power that you have, it is of the nature of God. It is of the nature of God. And when we exercise our faith in trusting God and releasing our faith, friend. You have the same ability as that woman with the issue of blood. I know for myself because I have done it my own self. I used to be very sick in my body. I was very sick when I was a young man. When I was about 20 years old, I had I, I was so sick. My, I mean, I would lay in my bed and cry like a baby. I was hurting so bad. I would ball up in my bed and I would cry. When I was about 26, 27 years old. And and God said, get your Bible and read it. And I got my Bible again to read it. He said, go to the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse number, chapter 16 and verse number uh, 15. I was a preacher. And I was still sick. And I began to read that scripture. And all of a sudden, that scripture started jumping off the page. And I said, wow, what is that? Then I stopped and I go read again and jump off again. And so I began to meditate on that. Then God said, and I saw what God was saying in the word. And, and the word of God said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I began to, and I read again. These signs shall, verse number 17, Mark chapter 16, verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they what? Cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall 
take of certain. If they drink any other thing, it shall not hurt them. Verse, verse number 18, latter part, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I said, God, I don't, I, I normally, I'm, I'm normally looking for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher to lay hands upon me. But this scripture don't tell me that I need to even call for the elders. He said, these signs will follow them that believe. And I said, well, Lord, I'm a believer. And, uh, and I, I said, Lord, I'm a believer. And so I, I, be, I said, Lord, my, my body is sick, and here goes some hands. And I, and I did like this. And in the name of Jesus, I release your healing power into my body right now. Body be healed in Jesus' name. And I rebuke this sickness and that pain. I command you to go from me in the name of Jesus. I didn't know what I was saying. I just did it. But then after, it was, after I took my hand off, within seconds, the pain that I was experiencing day after day after day after day was suddenly gone. Suddenly gone. Amen. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She purposed in her heart that she was going to get what she needed from God. I purposed in my heart what I was going to get from God according to the word of God. She didn't have the scripture. She only had a belief in her heart. We have the scripture. We can read the word of God of the of the what has happened in the past for them that needed a touch from heaven. We have the scripture where we can read what happened. They didn't have the scripture. So we got something to encourage us. We have something to put faith in us. The Bible said, Romans 10, 17, so that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, ever since I received that word, um, Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. If they drink any dead thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When I heard that word, when I received that word, friend, that word became a living reality in my heart and in my life. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I began to practice that and I began to preach that and I began to see many people healed. Because of the word of God. See, God has called us to live by faith. When we begin to live by faith, when we begin to practice faith, when we begin to, to exercise faith, then that's going to be a lot of times when you are not able to go to the doctor and, and you're going you're gonna to just go to the word of God and you're going to begin to read. You're going to begin to meditate upon it. You can, then you're going to, after you're going to meditate upon the word of God, you're going to just cry out to God, God, this is what your word said. I believe it. And Father, I thank you. I believe that I receive my healing. Amen. I, be I believe that I'm re delivered right now from every addiction, from every demonic force that is at work against me. Hallelujah. See, sickness is not sent to you from God. Sickness is not sent from God. It is the enemy working on you. Amen. Now I want you to look at, I want you to look at Mark chapter 16. And I want you to look at verse number 1. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 1. I'm going to show you something else. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16. And look at verse number 1. Hallelujah. Y'all get anything out of this this morning? Verse number 1 says, And when the Sabbath day was, and when the Sabbath day was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of, Je of James and Solomon, Sol Solomon, had brought Notice what it said, had bought sweet spices that they might, what? Come and anoint him. They was, they was headed where? To the tomb. This was after Jesus had been crucified. This was why he was in lying in the grave, in his tomb. Now notice, there was a great stone lying in front of the tomb. But you know what? They purposed in their hearts that they were going to go and anoint the body. You know, they never thought about the stone at the beginning. But after they, after they journeyed, they said, well, who's going to roll away up? Let's just read. Verse number two said, and very, and, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, who shall, notice what he said, who shall Roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre. See, they went and bought the spices not 
not knowing how they're going to get the cave, the cave door open, but they went in faith. They went in faith. Amen? Faith can move rocks. Faith can alter structures. Faith can move situations around in your life. Faith can set you free. Hallelujah. Verse number, verse number uh, uh, three. And when they were, and, and, and they said among themselves, who shall roll away, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when the, they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For it was very great. You know, now when they were going, I, I can imagine, you know, because they're about, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm quite sure that they had forgot about that Jesus said in three days he's going to rise again. And, and, and for him rising again, they still didn't have no idea how they were going to get in there. Even though he could rose, that, mean, that didn't mean the stone was going to be rolled away, but the angel of the Lord moved the stone. Amen. How did, why did he move the stone? Because he wanted those that were coming to the sepulcher they was coming by faith knowing that stone was in front of the door. But when they got there, they saw something had happened. They saw that the stone was rolled away. And when they came to anoint him, they found that he wasn't there. That he was risen. The power of heaven intervened in their behalf. And showed them that what they looked for wasn't there. Amen. God wants to intervene on your, in your behalf. When you start operating by faith, when you start walking out by faith, the thing that you're looking for, you'll find out that God has already moved it. When your faith began to be activated, you'll find out that what you thought that you had to move, that something that you thought that was going to be hard to get rid of, something that you thought that was going to be hard to, to get out of the way, all of a sudden you're going to find out because you did not allow doubt to grip your heart in your journey to this area of your life you find out that this thing was already moved. When they came, they found out that the stone was moved. Why? Because they did not consider or allow doubt to enter their heart when they left to go buy the spices to go and anoint the body. So the spices was gone. The, the, the stone was moved. Amen. The stone was moved. Look at verse number, what I, uh, verse number, verse number five. And entering, in, entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. Now Nova said, He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where he where they laid him. Behold the place where they laid him. See, your miracle is right there the moment you begin to take that bold step of faith toward God, you have an angel already assigned to you to roll away your stone. What, is, what could be the stone in your life? That stone could be that, that doubt or that fear or that unbelief. Amen. What is it that keeps you from moving forward and, 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 seeing, and, and seeing the will of God carried out in your life? Or you think that because the stone is there, you think it's an impossible situation? If they had a thought about that before they went forward, they probably would not even went and bought the spices. If they had a focus on the stone at first. But they didn't focus on the stone at first. They was only focused on getting to Jesus. That's all that was on their mind is to get to Jesus. Amen. And when they began their journey, their circumstances was taken care of. The hard thing that, was, that they couldn't move was already moved when they got there. See, God want to move the things out of your life right now. He want to move your heart situation. He want to cause your understanding to be in life. He want to cause your faith to jump to the next level. He want to see you begin to run and leap and jump and praise God as the man at the temple of the gate of the beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He want to see you begin to believe regardless of what you feel, regardless of what, you, what it looks like, regardless of what you see. Hallelujah. He wants you to begin to believe. See, faith, the faith, the spirit. See, while I'm, while I'm ministering this word to you, while I'm ministering this word to you, now, there's a, 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 a the, the spirit of faith is being released right now. 
The spirit of faith is being released right now. Amen. And so that's why while I'm speaking to you, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you from, you know, the word of God. But at the same time, while I'm speaking to you, at the same time that I'm speaking to you, the spirit of God, he's talking to your spirit. He's showing you things. He's giving you revelation concerning even what I'm saying. Am I right? Amen. Amen. He's talking to you. He's speaking to you. He's showing you the truth. Because see, when you know the truth, the truth is going to make you free. He's showing you revelation truth through what I'm sharing with you that's going to cause your, uh, your spirit to be risen, to be enlightened. Look at James chapter 2. The book of James chapter 2. Hallelujah. In the book of James chapter 2, I want to look at verse number 17. Are you there? Well, I'm not yet. Well, I am now. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, and when we're looking at this, I want you to, I want you to just uh, see faith at work. I want you to see faith at work. Amen. We just saw faith at work when we saw them headed to the, when they bought the spice. They didn't have no idea how the storm was going to be rolled away. We saw faith at work with the one with the issue of blood. Now, these were faith working that Jesus had nothing to do with. There was their faith working, not Jesus' faith. It was their faith that was working. Amen. It was their faith that was working. Amen. Verse number 17 says, James chapter 2, verse number 17. Even so faith, if it had not what? Works, is dead, being alone. Amen. Yea, a man may say, thou had faith and have not works. Show me thy faith without Thy works, and I will show thee my faith by what? My works. By my works. That woman with the issue of blood, she showed us her faith by her works. Amen. She showed us her faith by her works. What do you mean? How she shows her faith by her works? She laid up while she was laying in her bed. She had already established in her heart that she was not going to be denied. What she wanted from God. She had already did purpose in her heart. That she was going to get what she was aiming for. Are you prepared to receive what you're aiming for? Are you prepared to hear what God is saying to you? Are you prepared to, to just look at. To get your eyes off of your situation. And begin to look at the things that is least expected. What is the thing that is least expected? You've been defeated. Are seeing the, the proper results. Because we've been denied so often because of the way we've always believed. We've never believed properly, so we've not gotten the proper results. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so God is trying to change our thinking. The Bible said in, in Jeremiah chapter 1, and verse uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 12, he said, and he hastened to perform his word. So we got to hear what God is saying in his word. Because see, he can only confirm what you understand what he said. Amen. And it says in, in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein. Day and day. When is the word of God going to come alive to you? Is at the point that your heart begin become aware of. Of the source that is behind it. That's why the meditation. The meditating upon the word. Is so important. The meditating upon the word. Is so important. Because if you meditate upon the word. The Bible said. Thou shalt meditate upon the word day and night. Then thou shalt what? Make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Amen. See if you want to be a success. In your faith walk. Then you got to stay in the word. Because how do we feed our faith? By the word. We feed our faith by the word. What happens when we feed our faith? Our faith grows. Our faith grows. God wants to grow our faith. 
God wants to increase our faith. God wants to enlarge our, our vision. Amen. God wants to bring us to a place where our faith is working. Our, see, God wants us to put our faith to work. Look at Luke chapter 17 and let's look at verse number 5. Luke chapter 17 and verse number 5. God wants to grow your faith. Well, your pastor, I don't think that's possible. Yes, it is possible. It's very much possible. It's very much possible. Amen. See, when I went to Rainbow Bible Training Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, God began, he put a faith foundation in me, and, and I kind of strayed away from that thought, preaching a whole lot of other stuff. But, you know, uh, three months ago, God visited me and put me back on track teaching faith. Amen. Preparing the people for his coming. Oh, glory to God. Y'all don't hear me. Do you hear me? <laughs> Amen. God is calling us to hear what he's saying to us in these last days. Because, see, one word from God can change every situation in our lives. In chapter 17, verse number 5, it says, And he spake, Am I, are y'all with me? I'm in Luke. I'm in Matthew. I got to turn to Luke. <laughs> Luke 17, not Matthew 17. Luke 17, verse number 5. Here we go. Verse 5 says, And the apostle said unto the Lord, Now this is very important. You need to see and hear this. Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Amen. Increase our faith. Now, when he, when they asked Jesus to increase their faith, know what the Lord said unto them, verse number 6. And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this mountain, or not mountain, this is a sycamine tree. Ye might say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou what? Planted in the sea, and it what? Should obey you. It didn't say it would obey Jesus. It said it should obey you. So God is showing you that your faith, your belief in the scriptures, your Believing the power of God is very important. It's very important. You got to believe the word of God to see the power of God activated in your life. You got to see the word of God. You got to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he said that, and the Lord said, if ye have faith. See, he didn't say, I'm going to use my faith. To move that sycamine tree. And I'm going to show you how to do it. No he said. You take your faith. And you use it against that sycamine tree. You speak to that sycamine tree. You cause that sycamine tree to be rooted up. And be planted in the sea. You have the faith to do it. He didn't say I'm going to use my faith to do it. See this is the whole problem. We, look, we try to hang on somebody else's faith. When God is telling us to begin to use our own faith. We begin, God has given us. God has given us all. See, if you're a born again child of God, you got faith in you. You got faith in you. The only thing about it, you just had to learn how to develop it. The moment you became a born again child of God, faith came. Faith came. Now, the only difference in your faith and someone else's faith, like my faith, I've learned how to use my faith, and I'm beginning to exercise my faith a whole lot more since God put me back on the message of faith. I begin to exercise my faith a whole lot more. Now, it, it, when you begin to exercise your faith, that don't mean that everything is going to be good. Because that's going to be challenging because the enemy is going to try to stop your faith from working. Amen. The enemy is going to try to stop your faith from working. And so we, when, we start, when we start taking that step of faith, when we start walking in faith, then we can expect to be challenged. Look at verse number 11. Verse number 11 says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem... And, the, and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, 
and he entered, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten, the notice he said, ten men that were leper, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voice. Notice what he said, and they lifted up their voice. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, who lifted up the voice? They lifted up their voice. Who, lift, who are they? The ten lepers. The ten lepers lifted up their voice. Now, notice what it said in verse number, number 15. Now, verse number, oh, verse number, uh, the, 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 the verse number 13. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he was, and when he saw them, he said unto them, now know what he did. When he saw them, he said unto them, go show thyself unto the priest. And it, sh and it came to pass that as they went, this is very important, you need to hear this. And it came to pass as they went, they were what? Cleansed. They were cleansed. Verse number 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was that his that the that he was healed, he turned back with a what? Loud voice. See? If you look back at verse number one, verse number eleven, it says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were leper, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voice. They lifted up their voice. Now look at verse number, verse number uh, uh, 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice. Remember it was ten lifted up their voice, but only one turned back with what? A loud voice. Glorifying God. And he fell down on his face. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing. I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing. It was ten of them. They all yelled out from the beginning. Lord, have mercy on us and heal us. And when they turned and walked away, Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they turned and began to walk away, they were cleansed. They were healed. But when only one of them recognized what had taken place, and he turned back with what? Verse number 15? With a loud voice. With a loud voice. Amen? And what did he do? He turned, he turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. And glorify God. And then verse 16. And fell down on his face. At his feet. And fell down at his face, on his face. At his feet. But notice he was afar off. He was turning going the other way. He was going to the priest. To do what the Lord said. But when he saw what had took place. He turned back around. With a loud voice. What happened? He saw a miracle take place in his body and he wanted to give God the glory before he left the presence of the Lord. Mm. And he turned with a loud voice and he fell down on his face and he began to what? Glory to God. He began to Giving him thanks 
and he was, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus, verse number seventeen. And Jesus answered and said, Jesus answered and said, Where are the ten, where are the ten? Were there were there not ten of ten cleansed? Verse number seventeen. And Jesus answered, said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this, what? Stranger. Save this stranger. Now, notice, these were Gentiles. I mean, sorry, these were Samaritans. These were Samaritans. Jews had no deal with Samaritans. But yet, the Samaritans still got what they looked for. Who faith caused them to be healed? Who faith caused them to be healed? Called this, called this man. No, what it said in verse number, verse number eighteen. Verse number eighteen. There, the, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he, in, and, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Now, notice what he said. He didn't tell Jesus. Didn't tell him that he healed him. Jesus told him. Thy faith had did what? Made thee whole. The others were cleansed. Now, you know leprosy, it works against the, the body. It, it causes parts of the body to decay and to fall off. Now, when they turned and walked away, they was cleansed. But when that one turned back and fell at his feet and gave God the glory, the Bible said that he was, his faith made him what? Whole. In other words, when he made whole, everything that that leprosy had did to his body was restored. Was restored. When we understand how what it is that God is expecting of us, when we understand what faith is, what faith really does on our part and walk in that faith with an understanding, we will see the manifestation of the Word of God, of the Spirit of God, bringing us to a place of total wholeness. Complete. Complete wholeness. When God healed my body, I was suffering with an a, 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 a ulcerated stomach that the, my, I feel like the a hole was eaten all the way out to the core of my skin. I was in such pain, crying like a baby. And then on top of that, I had migraine headaches right along with it. That's why I couldn't, I, I had no strength to do anything. Because of the stomach ache and the migraine headaches, I was in such a turmoil. And I saw the word of God. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And I'd be reminded, God said, God, I'm a believer. And I'm crying like a baby. Tears running down my face. A grown man. But yet, I receive my healing. Not by what God did, but because I believed. Because I believed. Believe this man, he became whole because of his faith, not because of Jesus' faith, but because of his faith. He said, "Thy faith has made thee whole." Isn't that the same thing he said to the woman with the issue of blood? Thy faith has made thee whole. See, we see faith at work here. We see people have have, have taken a hold of what of what they believed that they what they wanted from God, and they didn't let go of it. They got a hold to it and would not let go of it. And it became, it became, it became everything that they expected to be. It became their healing. It became their deliverance. It became life to them. The word of God, it became their life strength. Jesus, thy faith has made thee whole. Ain't that what Jesus said? Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. Hallelujah. Look at 1 Corinthians. We have to feed our faith. 
We just don't, we, if we're going to believe God, we're going to start believing the word of God. If we believe in God for our family to be delivered, our family, our marriages to be restored and relationship to be, if we believe in God for, for the right relationship and all this stuff, amen, then we got to believe, we got to, we got to, we got to learn how to, just like the woman, we have to start confessing what we want. Because you'll never get it unless you put voice to it. Until you put voice to it. Out of your out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Faith is in you and is ready to be released out of you to create what you need. That woman lying in the bed, racking in pain, dying. If I may touch the hem of his garment, I know I should be, be, be made whole. What was she doing? She was creating her miracle in her own heart by her words. The leopard, when they cried out with a loud voice, have mercy on us. Only one of them turned back with a loud voice and gave glory to God. Fell down on his face at his feet. And Jesus spoke back to him. He said, where are the nine? Wasn't there ten of you? Where are the nine? Only one stranger turned back to give him glory, to give him thanks. And Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. People, faith is a force. That's wanting to go to work. That is wanting to go to work on your behalf. Faith has the power to bring you to that place where you will experience God's best in your life. To believe God and to act on what you believe is what God is looking for in his word. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 13. Hallelujah. Y'all get anything out of this this morning? Amen. Chapter 4, and verse number 13. And it says, We have the same spirit of faith. Who is he talking about? He's talking to everyone that has been born again. Everyone that's been born again have the same spirit of faith. I don't care. See, he, he didn't specify no age limit. He didn't specify how old you ha have to be to have faith. He didn't specify how young you got to be to have faith. I don't care if you ain't but five years old. If you're born again, that five year old got faith. Amen. And some of those five-year-olds that have been born again, they learn how to operate their faith more than the people that are 85 year old. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. See, he didn't specify the age limit. He said, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I have believed. What did you believe? That Jesus is the Son of God? That he died for your sin. And on that third day he rose again. Amen. What are the criteria of being, of being saved? To believe that Jesus is the son of God. That he died and rose again on the third day. Amen. Amen. So we believe. We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written. I believe. And therefore have I spoken. We also believe. And therefore speak. Amen. We also believe and therefore speak. Glory to God. When we come to that place to believe the gospel, we can release our faith because we all have the same spirit of faith. It's just that the, some have learned how to harness that faith or the power of the faith or the force of faith and to release it in a proper channel that it should flow and bring about the necessary or the thing that you have desired in your heart. Amen. The Bible says in Mark chapter Chapter 11 and verse number 22, it says, Have faith 
in God. Or, if you could say it like this, have the faith like God. Because we are, in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26, we are created in his image. So in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, he said, have faith in God, have faith like God. Well, we can have that because we are created in his image. He's not telling us to do something that we can't do. We can have the faith of God. We can have the faith like God. Because we are created in his image. We are created in his image. And after his likeness. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at John, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Glory to God. And I want you to look right here with me at verse number 4. 1 John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, I mean, verse number 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 4. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. See, we don't, we don't have to be defeated in our walk with God. That's why it's so important we learn how to walk by faith. Because, see, God has already provided you, provided for you to have victory over every force of darkness. What do you say in verse number four? For whosoever is born of God over what? Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. It says what? Even our faith. Even our faith. You know, and I know back back in the day when I, you know, I thought that I was preaching faith too much and I thought that, that uh, people didn't want to hear faith no more. I never really considered what God wanted me to preach. I just started preaching the, the, the message that I thought was popular. And when God instructed me three months ago to get back in the area of faith, and I, you know, and I'm thinking that, my God, I said, but Lord, you, there's so much other things that I could be preaching. But you know what? The Lord said, prepare my people for my coming. And, and then he reminded me, when I come, shall I not find faith in the earth? Amen. And so I put all that together. I said, oh, my God, that's all part of preparing for your coming. That when we come, we, when you come, you, we will be expecting your coming. We will be expecting to see you when you come. We will, be, we will have faith that we will see you when you come. See, the Bible says in Matthew. What is it, Matthew uh, chapter 24, verse 27? He said, As the lightning flashed from the east and shined even unto the west, so also is the coming of the Son of Man be. So, so faith, in, when faith is in the proper position, when that happened, we are already expecting to see the Lord coming in the clouds of glory. Amen. And so we got to have faith because, see, God don't want to come back and find a church been beat up and not able to uh, 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 maintain. He's looking for a church that has, that he's not looking at the size of the church. He's looking at the, 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 the character or the strength of the church. You are the church. Amen. He's not looking at no building. You are the building. That he's looking at. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing. Because see, he's looking for faith in you. He's looking to find faith in you as an individual. And that's why he has me to go back to the area of teaching on faith again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He want to he want to redirect your thinking. He want to redirect. He want to reprogram your thinking so you can start believing again. You remember when you first become a born again child of God? It was not hard for you to believe for something. What you believe for? I mean, it's just like 
You believe for it one week, next week it was there. Because you have faith. You trust, you have confidence in God. God wants to bring you back to the same reality of confidence in Him. When you know that He hears you, then you know that you have the petition that you desire of Him. But you got to come back to the place of knowing. Of knowing. And that begins in your heart with faith. Faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so when you when you stand, what what am I, what am I, uh, uh, verse number, first number four? Verse number four? Now look at verse number, read verse number four and five this time. For whoso, so for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that, what? Believe it, that Jesus is the Son of God. See, unless you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you don't have the victory in you to overcome the world because you are still part of the world. You're still serving your God, the devil. But I am not serving no devil. Oh, yes, you are. You may not know it, but you are. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, you are serving the devil. Well, how do I change that? Easy. By believing that Jesus is the Son of God and then asking him to come into your heart. Now, you've been translated, according to the scripture, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. And how did it happen? By faith. Simply believe in the gospel. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now notice what it says right here in verse number, verse number 19. Verse number 19. Let's just read verse number 18 and 19. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. In other words, he that is born of God will keep himself. And not, and that wicked one touch him not. Verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. What do it mean? We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. What do it mean? That the kingdom of darkness is all over the earth. The earth is controlled by Wicked, the wicked demonic spirits. And we know that we are of God because it don't have no power over us. Because we've overcome it. Can you see that in the scripture? We overcome the wickedness of the world. Why? How do we do that? Because we are of God. The wicked and tormented spirit, the wicked spirits are the one that is governing everything in this world. But since we're not of this world... It has no power over us. We have overcome him. Because the Bible says, 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. What? Those that are in the world. For the wicked is tormented. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are in the good place. How do we overcome? By knowing where we are positioned at. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians. No, let's go 1 Corinthians first chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 first. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're coming, we're, we're coming on out of here now. We don't have too much more on this lesson. But this is very this is a this is a powerful lesson. And I want you to, to get all that God has for you. Because see, we are, we are the children of God. And God is calling us. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, 
2 Corinthians 2. I'm looking at 2 Corinthians 14. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm, I got it now. Verse 14. Glory to God. Are you there? And it says, Now thanks be to God, which always, knows what he said, causes us to what? Triumph. In Christ, and make it manifest the Savior of his knowledge. By us in every place. Amen. So we see that we just talked about that we have been given, that we have victory. Our faith leads us to the area of victory. Now we see here that our faith brings us to a position of what? Triumph. Triumph. In other words, you don't have to be beat down no more. You don't have to be beat down no more. You don't have to, the enemy, though he's, uh, though he's in the world, but you are not of this world. You have been given victory, and not only have you been given victory, you have been given the spirit of triumph. Triumph. Hallelujah. Look at now 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Back it up two, three pages. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Amen. But thanks be to God which giveth us, there that word again, victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So where is the victory coming from? The victory is coming from the Lord. How do we get that victory? By yielding to him and walking by faith and not by sight. Everything that you need, God has already provided. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Everything that the enemy has did to try to stop, block, or hinder you, it can be moved away. It can be rolled away just like the stone was rolled away from the cave. All you got to do is make up your mind that you're not going to be stopped and just start going toward your goal. See, they started out toward their goal before they even realized the stone was in the, it was in the way. And as they went, they thought about it. And when they began to think about it, when they arrived there, it was moved. What moved the stone? Their faith to get to Jesus moved the stone. But it was an angel moved the stone. Yeah, but if they hadn't took that step before, if they, I believe if they never took out to go to that tomb to anoint his body, I believe that that stone would have still been there. But because they was going to anoint the body of Jesus, the angel met them. To show them, you're coming for Jesus, but look, he's not here. He's risen. He's risen. Hallelujah. He's risen within you. When you start walking toward Jesus, when you start taking those steps of faith toward Jesus, regardless of what you're experiencing, regardless of what you're going through in your life, when you start making those steps toward Jesus, all of those things that you thought would stop you, would block you, would hinder you, would keep you from getting to Jesus, they're going to be rolled away. They're going to be rolled away. Remember in John chapter in John chapter 11 when, Lazarus, when Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus, there was a stone in the way there too. And what he said, rolled away the stone. In other words, let, the, let, the, that, let that that is stopping him from coming out be moved away. And then he didn't go in there and said, Lazarus, where are you at? I got, I, I, they sent me for you. Lazarus, where you are? No. He stood up there with the people. And he said, Father, I know that you hear me because thou hearest me always. And because of them that's around me, I pray this. And then he looked at the tomb. And he said, 
Lazarus, come forth. Now, how did Lazarus come forth? He came forth on the word of God. The word of God will carry you as you begin to walk by faith. The word will undergird you and hold you up. One more example. When, now, if it wasn't meant for this to happen, it never would have said come. When the disciples was in the midst of the sea, being tossed and driven with the wind, and Jesus walking on the water, when they looked and saw Jesus coming and said, If it be thou, Lord, Peter said, bid me to come to you on the water. If it was not meant for Peter to walk on water, Jesus would not have told him to come. Why did Jesus call, tell Peter to come? Because it was meant for Peter to learn how to walk on the circumstances of his life. To walk in the midst of the circumstances of his life. Hallelujah. You are called not to allow your circumstances to walk on you. But you are called to walk on your circumstances. Regardless of what you are going through, regardless of what the devil is saying to you, I don't care what, how many voices you are hearing. You need to distinguish the voice of God when he's speaking. There's a lot of voices in the land today, and there's a lot of voices in speaking. But you have the ability to distinguish the voice that you will hear. You need to, you need to, 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 to seal it in your heart and in your mind. I know my father's voice. I know the shepherd's voice. And a stranger voice, I will not follow. You need, to, you need to settle that in your heart and in your mind. Because when all the voices is talking to you, there is still that little, still, small voice that is speaking. And you've got to be able to distinguish that. And when he speaks, you've got to just take a step of faith and act on it. Because that's where your miracle begins. Hearing and obeying. Faith is hearing by the Spirit and walking out what you expect to receive. That woman lying in her bed, she began to purpose in her heart and she heard faith rising up on her heart. See, she had already determined that she was going to get what she wanted. And she began to put action to it. She began to put works with her belief. She was so determined that she was not going to be denied. That she was not going to be stopped. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. All the women that was going to anoint the tomb, going to the tomb to anoint Jesus. These were no soldiers. These were women. Just like you in here. We have a few men, but I'm talking about they have more I'm about the same amount. Men got the same amount of men and women here today. And a little girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that those were women that were headed to the tomb. There were no men. That's why they would question themselves, how can we roll away the stone? It's so big. But because they did not allow themselves, allow that to hinder them from going. See, the average person would have turned around and said, there's no need of us going to the tomb. We can't move away the stone. Let's go back home and let's go find somebody to help us to move away the stone. That's what the average person would have did. But no, they kept moving forward. They kept moving forward. And they began to let people re rehearse in their hearts. God, how are we going to move away the stone? And before you know it, there was an earthquake. An angel came down and did what? Roll away the stone. God wants you to have that faith. 
to just take and just start out to do what he's called you to do. And in the midst of your going, that what you thought was impossible suddenly become possible. That what you thought would stop you suddenly is moved out of the way. There's no stopping a child of God that is walking by faith. Because faith is a force that can move mountains. Faith is a force that can take up a sycamine tree and make it be planted into the sea. Faith is a force that can move the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease from your body. Faith is a force that can stop the sun in its place until the battle is won. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith is all you need. Faith in God can stop your enemy from prevailing over you because your faith has given you the victory over the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Father, I have declared that which you have placed within my heart for today. And I have delivered it unto your people. Now, Father, I ask you in the name that is above every name. Lord, let not this word fall to the ground. Even let it register on our hearts today. Let the stone that is hindering us from moving forth be rolled away. Let the spirit of religion lose his grip right now over the hearts and the mind of your people. I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Father, I release the anointing to lift burdens and destroy yokes. Those that are needing healing, I've shared, Father, how you delivered me, the same as you delivered the one with the issue of blood. Let your people be free in Jesus' name from every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Hallelujah. We give your glory, Lord. Let the spirit of faith rest upon them, Father. Let them begin to believe you once again as they did when they first acknowledged you as their Lord and Savior. Let that faith return. Let that childlike faith return to their hearts once again. That they will see the signs, wonders, and miracles in their lives. And Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all get anything out of this today? Hallelujah. There's more coming, but not today. Tonight there will be at 6.30. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach faith until I got to teach faith. That's, that's what God put in my heart to do, and I'm going to teach it. That's what God won't, that's what the people of God is going to receive. That's what they're going to get. The only way they don't get it, they don't come. I believe you're going to come because I believe you want it too. Amen. I believe that you want it because this is life changing. Are you ready for your life to change? I'm believing God for your life to change through the messages that he's given me. And I'm believing that your faith would change and begin to produce not fear, not doubt, not unbelief, but reduce, produce the end result that God intends for you to receive in your life. Amen. This is what God wants. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to obey God on this thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's time for us to take about morning offering. Hallelujah. The Bible said for us to give, and it shall be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. 
with the same measure that we meet with thought, it shall be measured to us again. Hallelujah. God said, if we sow bountifully, we shall reap bountifully. If we give cheerfully, God will make all grace abound toward us. We will always have all sufficiency in all things and may abound to every good work. There is no lack, folks. There is no lack in God. God's word will produce when we take his word to heart and begin to live it. Hallelujah. According to his purpose, according to his plan, we will see the miracle working power of Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you ready to see God moving in your life? Like you've always desired to see Him move? Then try to be here and take these messages to heart. Because see, God is about to do something in our lives like we've never experienced before. We are in a good time we are in a good place with God. Because God is doing something and we want to get involved in what God is doing. How about you? Are you ready? Are you ready to get involved with what God is doing? Amen. I believe that we're in that season and we're in that time when we will experience the wonderful works of God like never before. Amen. So as you prepare your tithes and your offerings this morning, remember God loves the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. You always have an all sufficiency in all things and that, you abound, that you may abound in every good work. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's where we are, folks. We're in that place where Jesus Christ is being glorified. We're in that place. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I want to uh, thank you. Uh, for amen. Father, we bless this offering. We thank you and we glorify you, Father. We give you all the praise and honor, Father, for what you're doing in our church and in the people's lives, in their hearts. God, I ask you to touch right now because of their willingness to give to you. I release my faith for a manifold return upon their gift. Father, let it be given back to them good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give back into their bosom. I bless this offering. Let it be used for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I pray for my little daughter. God, she's always want to be the first one to get prayed for, even though she's, she's running before it's time for me to do it. And then she calls everybody else to jump up. So, Father, I just pray for her, and I still pray for those that are coming right now. I ask you, Father, that you would touch. I, God, I pray that she will have a heart of obedience. I pray, Father, that the spirit of rebellion would not be a, ever be a part of her life. In Jesus' name. But she would always honor her parents. And she will always obey you when you speak to her heart. I release blessings upon her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all see that? She's over here just raising her hands and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I bless my dear mother-in-law in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Father, that you would touch, that you would strengthen, that you would empower her, Father, in her heart and her mind to hear and to obey you. God, she don't hardly understand a whole lot. But God, she can understand you when you speak to her heart by the Spirit. You know her language. You can speak to her heart. And God, everything that's in her life that is not like you, let it be moved. Let her bring her heart to the spirit of obedience in every area of her life. I bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. What are you believing for?
Uh, you need a job? Raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for my nephew. Lord God, that you will move in a supernatural way upon his life. God, he's come to Sacramento. Now, Father, I'm asking you to provide for him. I'm asking you, Father, right now, as I release my faith with him and for him, I call this job into his life now in Jesus' name. Now. I command every blockage to be moved now. Father, as he go and apply for himself for a job in this city, there will be nothing to stop him. Every blockage be moved now in, this na in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you. Minister and angels, go forth. Go forth and bring it to pass. I release it now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. You receive that? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I rebuke this demonic spirit that is trying to control his body. I speak to every muscle. I speak to every nerve. And I command you to be relaxed now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you today. Your miracle working power is going to work on this brother's behalf. And that your word would not return void. And Father, I'm asking you, Lord God, for an internal change in his heart. Not an external change, but an internal change in his heart. Creating him, Father the spirit to follow after righteousness, peace. I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. I thank you for this man, Father. And I thank you that he come today. And I thank you, Father, that you will honor this request. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you want to come pray for? Did you need you okay? Anyone else? I got blessed last week. You got blessed last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did God touch you last week? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. If you want me to come back there and touch you, I can come back there. If you... Well, you back again, huh? <laughs> when I saw you walking around, look at God. Amen. Good to see you again, brother. Come on, look closer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother. I thank you, Lord God, for the work that you've begun in his heart and in his life. God, last week you set his foot on a path that you've called him to walk. Father, I see him back this week. God, I see the fire begin to burn in his spirit like never before. And I see him reaching out to you, God, with all his heart. God, he's looking for a complete change now. He's not just coming just to it in here. God, he's looking for a complete change. Spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotion. Oh God, I release that anointing right now. Let every burden be lifted right now. Let every yoke be destroyed right now because of the anointing. Set him totally free, Father. Let the joy flood his heart like God, like he had never experienced before. I release that now in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, I bless him now. I bless him now in Jesus' name. And God, let the work continue. I release the fire. Fire. Persian fire. I'm a rabbi. Persian fire. Persian fire. God, you're burning out everything that is unholy. Everything that is unclean. You're burning out everything that is unlike you. And God, you're replanting. You're, 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 you're replanting this fertile ground. We're proper seed that will bring forth a hundredfold return in Jesus' name. I thank you for it now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for my brother, Lord God, and I thank you, Father, for bringing him back again. 
I thank you, Lord God, that for the work that you're doing in his heart and in his life. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, let every demonic force that have come against his mind, they will try to put a limitation on his mind. Let every limitation be lifted off of him right now in Jesus' name. Let every restriction that the enemy has placed upon his mind be gone in Jesus' name. And God, I release the spirit of faith to begin to rest upon him. God, let this man begin to believe like never before. And let him see the miracle that he desired to see in his life. I release the miracle working power of God right now on his behalf. In Jesus' name. And God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for setting him free in every area of his life. In Jesus' name. Strengthen him where he's weak. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let me pray for you. Come here. Well, come on, testify too. <laughs> come on and testify. And, and, and Hallelujah. You want prayer first or testimony first? <laughs> okay. You told me before I went to go visit my family in Southern California, you were going to pray for my son. And usually when I go down there, it's just a spiritual battle. I want to see my grandbaby, but just dealing with family dynamics. And this time was a wonderful visit. I'm seeing just leaps and bounds of growth in my son spiritually. He's focusing on the Lord and fasting and, and oh, just God, that is making, a testimony. And it was a blessing this time. It wasn't I can come back just feeling spiritually drained and like fighting depression and being down there was just a real blessing. So, Amen. Amen. You see, when they believe the word of God that is spoken over their life, they get the results. Amen. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you for my dear daughter in the spirit, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in her life. I thank you, Father, for her son. I thank you, Lord God, for her grandson. I thank you, Lord God, that, that Father, I mm. Father, mm. mm. glory to God. Oh, ah, I see restoration coming in your son's marriage. That's what I just saw. That's what the Lord just said. Time I laid my hand upon you, the Lord showed me restoration is coming. And the things that were coming against their relationship, God said, I'm moving them out. Because now he began to, to seek me. He began to seek me. He said, now I will, I'm able to do that what I desire to do even from the beginning. But because he was in the way, I was not able to move because he stood in the way. But because now he's moving out of the way and allowed me, asking me to come in, I will come in, said the Lord, and I will do the work in their hearts that is needed, that reconciliation shall come forth, and they shall never be departed again, said the Lord. Mm, mm, oh, glory to God. You believe that? I believe that too. And I received that for the Lord. I received it for your, for your son. Hallelujah, glory. My God, the power of God is in this place. Mm. Amen. Amen. Y'all see, I'm telling you, God is going to do some things. God want to do some things. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. Hmm. God's about to bring another, uh, 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 I'm going to say it like this, a, a chosen man in your life. The Lord said, that what you have allowed in your life right now. And God said, now I don't know if anything, I don't know if any of this is true or whatever. I'm just saying what I'm hearing in my spirit. God said, this is not my will for you. God said, oh, my God. God said, daughter, trust me in this. For I see your hurt and I see your pain. 
But he said, daughter, trust me in this. And when he said he want to leave, do not stop him from leaving. The Lord said, release him and let him go. For I have ordained that which I have prepared for your life. And now is the season or the time that you prepare yourself for his coming. Mm. For his coming. Ain't that stuff making any sense to you? You don't have nobody in your life? Oh, he just left. Oh, well, anyway, God said, let it go. God said, let it go. God said, let it go. The right one is about to come into your life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The right one is about to come into your life. The one that's been sent by God. But you cannot allow what he looked like deter you. Because it's going to be sent by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Is all hearts and minds are clear? Are y'all ready for a miracle service tonight? Let us stand up. Oh my God. Father, I thank you for this time together. Father, I thank you for the miracle service that you're going to work in this place tonight at 630. God, I thank you that there shall be signs, wonders, and miracles that take place in here tonight. God, I thank you for it in advance. Oh, I see a bright light that is shining right now. I see a bright light, and it's so bright that it just, it just I mean, it's like un, something I've never seen before. And it's so bright. And it's just like, the, it's just like it's lighting up everything around it. The light of God is going to shine. It's going to shine. Hallelujah, like you've never experienced before. So come tonight and expect a miracle. Father, I release them until the end. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 630. Bye-bye. Let it finish. Let it catch up. I want to thank all of you for joining us today here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. God bless you, and I pray that you will minister to and touch as we were here. God bless you. Bye-bye.